Now at five, you're looking live at Washington, D.C. Over the weekend, if you hadn't heard, President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy worked out a deal to suspend the nation's debt ceiling until January of 2025. And today, that debate moves to Congress. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us at five. I'm Courtney Gooseman. And I'm Delon Dillard. And now that they have that deal, President Biden and Speaker McCarthy are working to win enough congressional votes to pass the bill. But the agreement is meeting resistance from hardline conservative Republicans and progressive Democrats. Both the president and speaker saying neither side got everything they wanted. As the political drama continues to play out on Capitol Hill, the projected June 5th deadline for a government default is fast approaching. Both parties are now working their sides of the aisle to get the votes to pass a deal through both chambers of Congress before the country runs out of cash to pay its bills. Not one Republican should vote for this deal. It is a bad deal. But I feel very good about it. I've spoken to a number of the members. And now President Biden is facing resistance from progressive Democrats who oppose parts of the deal, including new work requirements for some receiving federal food aid. With that debate in Washington, D.C., there is talk right here at home about part of the agreement, more work requirements for Americans who are 40 and older and want to receive food assistance. But the proposal will remove barriers for veterans and homeless adults. Today, News 5's Nadine Abusada went to food pantries that would deal directly with the effects of any SNAP benefit changes. Meet Dale Kramer, who is a Parma man that loves his city. I was born on Brookview Boulevard, which is one block over that way. So much that he's been volunteering at the Parma Hunger Center since 2002. Check the orders for the families that are coming on a particular day. At the drive through pickup, they say they've recently seen more people. This is as of the end of April, and we're already on pace to wind up with about 3,000 families. Kramer believes the increase is due to inflation, increase in Ukrainian refugees coming into Parma, and changes to SNAP benefits. He's not alone. Dan Flowers with the Akron Canton Food Bank is seeing those same increases. If you were to look at all of 2023 compared to 2022, we're up 33%. Along with the decline in donations, to the point that he's been advocating to the state to increase funding for Ohio food pantries. We're giving less food to more people, and we really need the state general assembly, the Senate, and the governor to support this increase of funding for Ohio's food banks. We're in a tough spot. Experts at Case Western say SNAP benefits are a crucial program for so many in the country. It's one of the most far, along with Medicaid, is one of the most far-reaching of our social safety net programs. In D.C., there are discussions of changing work requirements that apply to those 49 and younger to 54 and younger. Under the change, if you are 54 and younger with an able body with no kids, you must work or participate in training programs for at least 80 hours a month to receive benefits. Work requirements do have a negative effect on receipt of SNAP benefits, partly because uh, it's another hoop to be jumped through. It's hard enough just to get enrolled in SNAP. If the change goes into place, Flowers predicts less people will get the benefits, which means food pantries will continue to see more visitors. There's an obvious correlation between uh, the funding that's in the SNAP program uh, and how many people come through emergency food lines. They just hope more donations will come their way as well as they continue to feed those that need it most. They're helping other people. You're doing something to benefit others, to give back for all the help you've had all through your life. Morning in Cleveland, Nadina Busada, News 5. Many Ohio households struggle to put food on the table. 2020 data from the USDA found 10.8% of households in our state were food insecure, meaning they had limited access to food. And 13.4% of the population lived below the poverty line. This data also found that 84% of eligible individuals here in Ohio participated in SNAP benefits in 2018. SNAP lifted more than 279,000 people above the poverty line between 2014 and 2018. 